to be honest, I I don't know. <laughs> and I think anybody that says they know is not being honest. genuinely honest. Yeah. Um, I I believe that there is there is a system that works in our environment of going in cycles. We have business cycles. We have uh, health cycles. We have epidemic site cycles, and they they intensify for a period of time and. Then some of them wither away, others get more entrenched. But if you go back in time, uh, there would have been a view that HIV AIDS was going to be the killer of humanity. But a remedy was found or a treatment was found that, that seemed to work. I feel for sure uh, we will have a solution that will, if not remove the uh, perils of COVID, uh, that we will have something that will reduce the intensity of, of what we have. Now you may argue that that's not going to happen and you may well be right. I, I think there's something to be said for your inner feelings. It, it, you have situations in Europe and the UK where people have um, dis dismissed the, in, the impact of, of the COVID and are suffering just now because it was done a little too quickly and then considered to be uh, something that they could overcome. And it left them going into another lockdown now, which will go through Christmas. Um, so if we extend that theory, we have uh, people living in close proximity to each other who have probably given antibodies uh, that are not so well uh, seen in, in highly developed countries and today may, may be, over time become the, the savior of, of the uh, the devastation that that we see around us. So I don't want to sound either um, very optimistic or very pe pessimistic. I don't know. I think uh, I, I prefer to remain on the safe side of the street, if you might. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want I don't want to be a hero or a dead hero, yeah. and and I think if one does deals with this with respect, either whether you look at the face mask, whether you look at washing your hands frequently, whether you look at raising the hygiene hygiene standards that our environment has. Um, and if one looks at reducing the closeness of proximity to each other, you have uh, maybe a tiresome, but what appears to be a working protection of sorts to what we have uh, today. When should we discard the, the curse of COVID? I don't know. Uh, how seriously should we pursue this? I don't know. Uh, all I know is that there are families that have never stepped out of their flats when this happened. They've 
they had their staff go to the market. They stayed away. They they um, treat everything that comes into the flat, and they have contracted the virus. So uh, I I think we have to be humble to realize that we have something very powerful that that is behind us. I'm not talking of of any kind of supernatural, but just a biotech uh, aberration that is taking taking place. Perhaps no different from cancer and cancer cells that run amok. And uh, everybody's quick to have an explanation or to decry something or uh, run up a red flag on a poll. But I, I think my only answer to your question, which was a good one, is that we need to deal with this with respect. I would say that the what we shall for the time being called called the job market. Mm -hmm consists of more than one category of, of uh, people. The people that have no skills and that have no uh, means of exercising those skills. We have people who have been educated and are but are ant workers, you know, they're there in multitude. They serve their purpose. They go home in the evening. They have jobs, uh, permanent or temporary. And then there are the, the truly educated who make uh, technological contributions who I, I think if we uh, look deeper, the cream of the segment goes overseas. They're probably act, actually shrinking. I'm saying this uh, unaided and I could be wrong, but, mm -hmm. but um, what I'd like to say is that there are people who don't have jobs and don't have training. There, there's a segment of the marketplace which is attracting a lot of attention, and that is skilling. People are learning to, to be adept at certain skills. So when you look at an automated uh, process, there's a new type of... Uh, job you don't call it an un, uh, an unskilled job it's a skilled job it doesn't have a degree or a diploma but it has a methodology that has to be worked and what does it do it supplies high tech uh, products or high tech processes to the marketplace which are often not used by unskilled people, but are distributed among the skilled uh, uh, section of, of our community. Um, we, have, we have another segment, which is uh, what we have come to call the uh, migrant labor part, which which also lost jobs in in this uh, uh, position, and who may come back because they have no choice, 
but there too, I, I think we need to recognize that they had certain skills which nobody has tried to protect. Nobody has tried to build on those skills. And so uh, this remains as a sort of caustic or toxic uh, area. We have, if you go through history, you look at the Middle East, what were the skills that existed in the Middle East uh, for construction or labor? They, these were jobs that were created. Nurses went overseas, uh, laboratory assistants and, and uh, uh, and labor, uh, to use a better term. Uh, spent their time learning and growing and prospering in a community. But what was behind it was the need for people, not necessarily robots, but people, to make the high technology things work. In the 70s, uh, when uh, circuit, uh, IT circuits were the height of technology, we had bunches of Chinese young ladies who, who worked through microscopes, uh, bonding, lead bonding leads from uh, circuit circuits to other points in circuit and they did they did work at speeds that today would seem to be a thing of the past because they had speed they had accuracies etc but that's gone now now it's that's history maybe people are looking at speeds five and ten times or a hundred times faster uh, looking at accuracies and and no mistakes at a much lower lower rate and um, so where is the uh, joblessness actually lying? It's really lying in a mismatch of skills to the opportunities that are there. And there's nobody to marshal it in and say, why don't we take this group, skill them, provide them with skills, help get them jobs. And it doesn't matter that they're not called managers. So I, I think you're right that we have a large group of people who don't have jobs. We also have inadequate attention to the people who don't, uh, who don't have jobs to try and give them the skills to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Ironically, the, the government today is quite seriously looking at this skilling area as, as something that they need to look at in something that they need to uh, create into a prosperous thing. Now, will it be here or will it migrate to the Middle East where the opportunities are better? Are, those are questions that we have to ask ourselves. Can we avoid having that happen? I believe that looking at climate change or recognizing its uh, importance uh, is is something that I'm very pleased is happening because a few decades ago it would have been considered to be absurd to 
to spend time and money to give ourselves a, a, a better blue sky to look at. Uh, and the byproduct would have been to have better uh, uh, oxygen and air to breathe. But uh, what we were not looking at was uh, what are we doing for the generations to come? Maybe we, we don't see climate change in quite that way. There'd be a large uh, segment of population that would say, why are we focusing on this? What is it doing for us? It's eating up our, our funds. Our, we can't get enough food to, to eat. And, and why are we doing this? And I think we have to respond by saying that if we don't do this and we don't recognize the importance of climate change, then we are in fact damning the future generations to come because then it's too late to, it may be too late already in some areas, but it's too late to react to this. So I think there's always a resistance when you have to put your hand in your pocket and take something out which doesn't have a, a return written in, but there's a need at, at the same time to recognize that icebergs are breaking away because of, uh, because of the heating of the environment, that over the next X number of years, fish are going to be dying because of overfishing that that takes place, uh, that uh, emissions are going to kill uh, the food we eat and, and the things we do, the drinks we have, and we're going to continue to have people say, I don't care. And I, I feel we should, we should be caring and we should consider that if we didn't do it, it would be too late. Share or download Kare Dhanik Bhaskara.